Welcome to today's lesson, which is Act, April Aardvark, Act 15. Now, I don't want you to worry if you're feeling as though you're behind, it's not working, any of those things. Um, we're all going to get together. We're going to work in different groups. The main thing is that you look after your mental health and that you get back with your friends and that we're all talking and we're all catching up and we're all connecting. So I do, if you, you know, have a go at it, have a listen, have a watch do all those sorts of things. I've got it in written form and in um, also obviously in audio. So that both links are there on Compass for you. So you can just have a listen, just kick back and there's only three quick questions to answer. So let's have a look at our learning intentions and success criteria. So we will critique, uh, we will be thinking critically about text. Uh, and the character's actions, reactions, growth, or evolution, or their insight. Have they changed? How have they changed? We're up to the second last act. So we're, we're at, if you're looking at a narrative, we're looking towards that conclusion. Um, we're going to investigate and explore meanings or inferences made by the author. So we're always doing that. We're always looking into what do they mean? They're saying something. Um, they're, they're wanting us to understand something. So your do now is to think about two of the main characters and how do you think they've grown and changed during the text. You might want to dot point your answer now. You might want to pause the video. Uh, you uh, might want to do it at the end. It's up to you. So let's just have a little bit of a link. We're making links between acts. So this is obviously where Ed thought he was still controlling the situation. We're building some visuals again. This one's not quite as creative. A um, bit tired this week, so <laughs> we'll see how we go. So again, that's where um, April Ardbuck is a babe, um, where she got him to um, someone else to change it. So what Ed had written turned into a compliment. So April always seems to be one step ahead. Um, and now we come up to Act 15. So we have Alex and we have Lizzie. And um, Alex is a bit upset. She drops her school bag. So school corridor afternoon. Alex enters, like I said, carrying a school bag. She stops and angrily throws her bag to the ground and Lizzie enters. Like I said, not my best animation, not my best visual. But again, characters are vector silhouettes. So I don't destroy your vision of them. So things to notice about the text. So again, you can see behind me on our wheel, we are critiquing. I'm not sure if I can get that right, just there. So things to notice. And again, when we come together, we're going to finish this off properly. It's all okay. We'll have different working groups. We'll work from where you are. So please just give it your best shot. So things that I was critiquing and looking at, um, that Lizzie uh, is showing understanding empathy towards Alex. There might be a few reasons for this. Alex, you know, Lizzie is uh, realising things about herself. She's realising that Alex is showing her emotions in different ways. And obviously, you know, like talking about burning her Barbie dolls and talking as if she's her Barbie dolls instead of saying how she feels. Uh, again, this is giving you lots of things to answer. Uh, Lizzie admitting that she has different attractions and being true to herself and others. So admitting that she wasn't lying to Ed, that she's not sure whether she likes boys or girls. Um, that it's not about Ed. Um, remember, she's being blackmailed. She feels as though um, she can't be true to herself and she's finally realising that she can. Uh, Ed's still not quite getting it. An interesting line that that always stands out to me is, if we didn't create her, sorry, I'll stop swinging, didn't create her, then we, if we did create her, then we can make her one of us. So he still doesn't get it. He still thinks he can control the situation, that he is number one, that he's trying desperately to be top dog, I suppose. Um, so when he does have a confrontation with April, a lot of it comes out about the bullying, that his father calls him a loser, that his father doesn't think much of him, that his father is bullying him. So is he a victim of some sort? Is it that cycle that he doesn't know how to change, that he has anger, that that he doesn't know what to do with it? Um, all those sort of, I suppose, a little bit cliche for me. Um, but, you know, that is a part of who that character is. So how has he evolved and changed? 
Uh, Emmy and Deanna's dynamic, how has that changed? Sorry, I forgot to put my question mark on the end of that. Um, again, I'll fix that typo. So how has this changed? How, how are they coping with it? the phones? Why have they gone from, you know, being the ones sort of mocking everyone else to being the ones that are without phones or being teased or teasing each other when they're supposedly best friends? And who else starts to be true to themselves? If we have a look here, you you obviously you can choose to read the extract or you can click on and listen to it or you can do it both together. It's completely up to you. You can go back and look, listen to the other ones. Uh, email me if you want some of them. I've got most acts linked. Uh, but if it's not there, something's missing, let me know if you've got any stresses. And hopefully, hopefully, the campus will be open Tuesday so I can get to see you all face to face then. Otherwise, have a great Monday. Contact me for any help. Um, talk to you later. Bye.